Good morning, my friends. It is a gray and somewhat damp uh, May morning here in Southern California. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso, Vrime Mani Patantrika. You can call me Jigme. And this is Enlightened Fitness, where first <coughs> we will cultivate the body of a tantric sex god through the cunning use <laughs> of high-intensity um, body weight interval training, and then we'll cultivate both the heart and the mind of a Buddha through guided meditation. Now, guys, here's the deal. Um, about three inches below the video, you can find a button that reads Show More. When you click that, it'll reveal a list of links as long as my arm. Those links are super important. They'll teach you how to warm up. They'll teach you how to do the exact exercises I do. They'll teach you how to do easier variations and more challenging variations. Um, they'll also teach you how to do the yoga moves I do. They'll teach you how to do how to sit in meditation, how to count your finger creases. They'll also teach you how to contemplate, which is very, very important. If I remember correctly, the second link from the top mentions nutrition. Guys, 70% of fitness, 70% of weight loss, 70% of beauty is what you stick in your mouth. That's why I recommend the low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet. It's good for you, it's good for the animals, it's good for the planet. There are many versions of the low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet. Some are designed for those who are hedonists, and they're used to the standard American diet, and they just want to move in a healthy direction incrementally. Nothing wrong with that. But for those who want to increase their beauty and their health and their lucidity and their longevity on the hurry-up, you like that phrase? I stole it myself. Then I recommend the 80-10-10 diet. You can get the book on the website. I'm going to read to you a short excerpt today, wonderful book, very kind author. Um, there's a wonderful website you could check out, it's called 30 Bananas a Day, look that up on Google. And here's the basic idea, in a nutshell, all day long, eat all the sweet, ripe fruit you can get your hands on, don't count calories. Or, or let me rephrase it, don't restrict calories. If you count calories, it's to make sure that you're consuming enough, at least 2,000, 250, 3,000 calories a day. Reload up as much of the ripe, fresh fruit that you can. You will, you will not gain weight. For dinner, have a delicious salad with you know, no oil. Just, and once again, they can hook you up with recipes on YouTube or uh, the 801010 diet, but you know, being a lazy bachelor, I just put together a salad with you know a head of green leaf lettuce, chop that bad boy up, chop up some cucumbers, some tomatoes. Um, for salad dressing, I have a food processor. I put in some celery, some um, what's it called, lemon juice, and it's delicious. It's delicious. Um, if you do that, you won't know if it's going to work for you if you do it for three days. Do it for a hundred consecutive days. Take a picture of yourself in a bikini or a swimming trunk. Take your measurements, weigh in, stick to this diet a hundred consecutive days, weigh in, take your measurements, take a photograph of yourself in the bikini, compare the difference. I can tell you honest, the first week, you're going to hate it. It's because most of us have addictions to salt. Most of us have addictions to, to fat. And when we reduce the fat and eliminate the salt, our body freaks out. <laughs> um, like a, <laughs> like a, a conservative priest at a, at a college toga party. He freaks out. <laughs> um, but give it a try. Now, that, now, once again, 
I'm not a big fan of bulimia. I'm not a big fan of anorexia nervosa. But if you want to, you know, increase your health and your strength and your fitness while reducing your fat without starving yourself, without using amphetamines or nicotine or coffee or anything like that, if you want to improve your health while reducing your fat, 80-10-10 is the way to do it. You never have to purge, you never have to go hungry. I strongly recommend this diet for those who want fitness on the hurry up. For those who want to take their time, please just use the low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet, diet that's promoted by Dr. Neil Barnard, that's, pro that's promoted by uh, Dr. Um, McDougall. Good diets that's promoted by the Esselsteins, that's promoted by the you know, Engine 2 diet. Those are plenty good. Plenty good. And, you know, there are world-class triathletes who thrive on that diet. So, radical, awesome, slow and steady, whichever you prefer, there's a book for you. So, having said that, let's hit the 80-10-10 diet. And to make the reading a bit more legible, I need to use glasses. I was conversing with a dear friend the other day, and we were talking about how much we like salt, and she just said, I'm addicted to salt. And that really, that, that vulnerability, that authenticness really helped me look at my relationship with salt even sea salt or Himalayan salt. And um, so last night I decided to go salt free. Well, I decided to go salt free. Last night was my first night, so this is the first week I'm going to go salt free and we're going to notice the effects. And it might be a little uh, weepy, a little weak, but if it makes me healthier and more productive in the long term, then it's a sacrifice or an inconvenience well made. So, we're playing with the introduction to Dr. Graham's 80-10-10 diet, and right now he's exploring the topic of mixed messages. It is crazy to think that we can keep doing what we have been doing while expecting the outcome to be any different than it has been. If we truly want healthy results, we're going to have to start living more healthfully. But exactly what changes should we make? Daily, we encounter an endless barrage of contradictory opinions and opposing interpretations of practically every aspect of nutritional science. Nutrition is so rife with conflicting theories that the so-called hard scientists, the physicists, the mathematicians, physical chemists, and others frequently denigrate nutrition as not a real science. Of course, my response to that is to eloquently say, bite me. <laughs> Back to the text. Confusion seems to be the only constant in weight management. A new diet craze comes into vogue almost every week, each one hyped as the answer to our waistline woes. Some advisors tell us to minimize fat, while others assert that eating fat does not make us fat, and fat brings us greater health. Some vilify carbohydrates, while others show convincing evidence that whole grains should be our staple. We have to wonder, what are these, which of these conflicting theories are true, which are hogwash? Could there be some middle ground? I'm going to stop here to quote me. So here's the deal. I've got shelves full of nutrition books. Each one is con each one has a practicum that contradicts the other, but each practicum is supported by pages and pages and pages of theories and test results. I've come to the realization that the only results I care about are mine. So when I get a new book about nutrition, I go straight to the practicum and I apply it for a week or two and notice the results. If the results are favorable, I keep at it. If the results are unfavorable, I move on. One of the things I love about Freely and uh, 
Harley, the people who run, or at least head, 30 Bananas a day, is they, they're very generous with their free teachings on YouTube. And what Harley does, he gets so many people saying you can get protein deficiency, you can get iron deficiencies, um, you can get B12 deficiencies. Uh, so what he does is every year he has blood tests and he publishes it on YouTube and it just shows that he's thriving on a high fruits, low fats, raw vegan diet. And um, I really like that. I love the fact that um, there's uh, an 80 10 tenor in New York who went from running marathons to running ultra marathons and all his times have improved. He's a world-class athlete. I love the fact that, you know, Harley, although he might not be a world-class athlete, is a very competitive runner and cyclist, and his results have just kept improving. So I love the fact that people, uh, when, they're, when they're serious about this, uh, and, and they're serious about their fitness, only notice positive results. Um, let's face it, um, someone who sat on the couch for 10 years, starts eating right, they can get dramatic results. But someone's already an athlete. And they get even better results. Really is impressive to me. Let's continue with the excerpt. Worse yet, if you desire not only to trim a physique, but also, also let me try that again. If you desire not only a trim physique, but also vibrant health, the waters become even muddier. One self proclaimed expert tells you that minerals are the most important aspect of nutrition while another claims that structured water will cure all that ails you. Hordes of scientists, nutritionists, doctors, healers, and lay people fill the bookstores and crowd the lecture circuit with convincing tales of indispensable virtues, of the indispensable virtues of vitamins, essential fatty acids, antioxidants, enzymes, or some other silver bullet that is sure to, ooh, tough word to pronounce, ameliorate all your health, aging, and weight issues. All these parties defend their turf with a vengeance, and understandably so. Most of them have a deep, let's try this again, most of them have deep economic ties to their particular nutritional approach, complete with programs, supplements, superfoods, motivational seminars, prepackaged meals, and a wine assortment of accessories. That confusion was not lost on me. Over the years, I've tried more diets than most people have even heard of. This is especially true because I was seeking an optimal plan for health, athletic performance, and body weight management, all at the same time. I got tired of trying one new approach after another. But what else was there to do? I had to keep looking for something that worked for me on all levels. Dr. Doug continues with the science of health. For me, the form began to lift in the late 1970s. I remember the sense of thrill and relief I felt after years of fumbling around with diets and health fads to finally alight upon a diet that works in all the ways I sought and the clear and incontrovertible evident, evidence to back it up. In this book, I share with you some salient bits from the body of knowledge called Natural Hygiene, literally the science of health. Information that changed my life and allowed me to coach thousands of people to attain the well-being, vitality, and physique they have always wanted. The dietary approach I recommend, especially with its emphasis on fresh fruits and vegetables, may sound radical, particularly in light of the prevailing attitude held by doctors, supplement vendors, and fat diet hawkers, that, who all would have you believe that the keys to health and fitness most certainly do not grow on trees. I invite you, however, to withhold judgment and to stick with me as we examine the natural simplicity of living a high-produce, low-fat lifestyle, truly the one which nature designed for us. So it's my intention to add three bananas a day and some of Durian Ryder's, um, what's it called, YouTube channel to the, uh, oh gosh, what's it called? To the links below the video. Now, having said all that, my friends, time has come 
to break a sweat. Our workout's only going to be approximately eight minutes long, so really we want to push yourself as intensely as it is safe to do. The goal is to complete the eight minute workout drenched with sweat and out of breath. Alrighty. My friends, let's warm up using two repetitions of Vinny Inspired 12 Phase Sun Salutation. Uh, my former wife, bless her heart, was half uh, Bengali, and so she used to watch many of the uh, Bollywood musicals, and she told me one musical was about a bunch of villagers who learned to play baseball. And at one point in the film, they all warmed up for baseball with this exercise, which I thought was adorable. Of course, if you really want to warm up when doing this exercise, be sure to breathe like Darth Vader with his mouth closed. <laughs> okay, welcome to the first circuit. First set of heel squats. First set of toe squats. First set of pressing. There are many different styles of presses. Use whatever works best for you. First set of thrust, thrusters. <coughs> For some reason, my feet like it better if I do thrusters with my flip flops on. Because I'm all classy all the time. First set of strappy chins. <sighs> All right. Welcome to the second circuit. Second heels. Second toes.
second press. Ooh. Second thrust. Whoops. That's better. Second chins. Welcome to the third circuit. Third heels. Third toes. Third press. Wow. Third thrust. Excuse me. Third chins. Welcome to the fourth circuit. Fourth toes. Fourth press.
forth thrusts. Fourth chin. circuit. Here we go. Well, kids, we're having some fun now. Fifth, heels. Five, fifth, toes. Fifth thrust. Fifth and final chin. body weight interval training. Now it's time for guided meditation. One of the first links you'll notice below the video will take you to a page on my website where all I mean, light and video vi videos are organized. And light and fitness videos are organized. First, they're organized by length of workout. And then in each box, they're organized by length of meditation. Mm. Please do yourself a favor. And please start. with the three minute guided meditation. Once you're comfortable with that, move on to the six minute and the nine minute and the 12 minute and so forth. I, I beg you, please set yourself up for success. 
This is supposed to be pleasurable, not some forced death march to Duckow. I don't say that to be insensitive to the Jews. I am a Jew. I say that because this is part of my culture, part of the world that my brain lives in. And because it begins with the same letter. Let's see, am I headless? This will work. Okay. This morning, I'd like to read to you from an English translation of a fairly ancient text. This text is one of the first that I would categorize as Rime Manipa, which can be translated as the non-sectarian devotion to the Buddha of compassion. And I have to warn you, the author was fun more fundamentalist, is fundamentalist and I'm liberal, so I'm gonna so some of these statements will be a bit harsh. Some will be literal, some will be a metaphor, some will be simile, some will be hyperbole. I, I'll, I use my glasses, but they'd probably fog up right now. So let's dig in. This is a, the quintessence of spiritual practice, the direct instructions of the great uh, compassionate one, as taught by Karma Shagme Rinpoche. It was translated by Tuku Urjian as well as his friend. I'm having trouble finding his name. Oh, yeah. It was translated by Tuku Urjian, Choke Nima, and his buddy whose whose name is not listed, which is very selfless. Okay. Inspired by the literary tradition of the Kagyus, the, the chapter, the first chapter is entitled The Song of Summarizing the Profound Teachings, beginning with the Sanskrit Namo Maha Karunikaye, which can be translated as a pay homage to the great compassionate one. And it begins Emaho or Oh How Marvelous, or Simpson would say Kawabunga. The sutras, tantras, and philosophical scriptures are extreme, extensive, and great in number. However, life is short and intelligence limited, so it is hard to cover them completely. You may know a lot, but if you do not put it into practice, it is like dying of thirst on the bank of a great lake. Likewise, it sometimes happens that a common corpse is found in the bed of a great scholar. Friends, they're not talking about um, necrophilia. They're talking about a great scholar might die not as a saint, but as an ordinary man. In other words, possessing knowledge is a good start, but it's not going to help you until you actually apply it until it transforms us viscerally. Um, at the end of every practice, the first recita verbal recitation we use is, uh, there's a virtue we will now accomplish, the spontaneous, habitual, ease and effect of mastery of Buddha's mental yogas of wisdom, peace, love, and joy. Now lead every living being with an exception to this ground. My friends, what separates a Buddha from a Bodhisattva? A, bodhisattva, a Buddha is simply a Bodhisattva who's mastered Buddhist techniques to the point where he's able to practice them spontaneously, habitually, easily, and effectively. 3D! Woo! <laughs> the scriptures of the sutras and tantras and the words of the learned and accomplished ones of India and Tibet 
all have great blessings that are difficult for ordinary people to grasp. Though they are indistinguish oh, sorry, although they are indispensable for teaching in a monastic college for one pointed practice, they are of little use. This pointing out instruction for an old lady is more beneficial for your mind than all the others. So, if that phrase smacked of misogyny, uh, probably there's probably a good reason for that. I'm very grateful uh, that we were raised in the environment we were, where we know better than to denigrate women. All the innumerable and profound teachings, such as Mahamudra and Dzogchen, which are decisive and mistaken in each root text, are indispensable when teaching disciples who will hold the Dharma lineages. But for personal practice, for the sake of the future, it is more profound to condense them all into one. To grasp precisely and unmistakably the various traditions of the Dharma is necessary for upholding the doctrinal teachings. But if you are concerned for the welfare of your future, it is more profound to train in being non-sectarian, seeing all of them as being pure. It is necessary to focus your mind on one single and sufficient master, if you are to be his chief disciple. But if you wish to have the virtues of experience and realization dawn within you, it is more profound to combine the t all the teachers you have met into one and to visualize him as the Buddha resting on your crown and to supplicate him. So you'll notice there is a dichotomy in these verses. They talk about politics and they talk about the spiritual path. The reason for that is we have to make the distinction. We can do that which will make us popular and give us esteem in the eyes of others. Or we can do that which will truly benefit us intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. That's why the majority of great saints, at a certain point in their training, left the monastery and went to live in caves. Thanks for all the rice, I'm going home. <laughs> that, of course, was a reference to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Woof! The different recitations of the various development stage practices of numerous Yadam deities in the sections of Tantra are indispensable if you are to give empowerments as a great master. But as a means of purifying your own obscurations and attaining accomplishments, it's more profound to practice one deity in Mantra, which includes them all. That's right, folks, simple is good. The innumerable practices of the completion stage, with and without a reference point, are indispensable for expounding the innumerable, innumerable meditation manuals. But as a means of the virtues of experience and realization to dawn within you, it is more profound to sustain the essence which is the embodiment of them all. There are many ways of demonstrating the view, such as cutting through fabrications from outside and from within, but just as smoke vanishes when the flames in a fireplace are extinguished, it is more profound to cut through the roots of mind. Although there are numerous meditation techniques, both with and without concepts, it is more profound to practice the unity of luminosity and emptiness, the development stage completed by mere recollection. In other words, Let's not get overly hung up on offerings and visualizations. Like, do that which is most important. Now, that, that upset a lot of people, especially fundamentalists. But I'm not interested in making friends. I'm interested in helping as many people as possible to become happy campers, at least, and most accomplish the 10th Bodhisattva Bhumi, full enlightenment. Although there are numerous kinds of behavior, high and low, coarse and precise, it is more profound to exert yourself as much as you can in practicing virtue and abandoning evil deeds. In Yiddish, I'd say, or in half pidgin Yiddish, I'd say, don't be a mumser, be a mensch. In other words, don't be a bastard, be a nice boy. Such a nice boy. 
I'm 47, I'm still Helene's boy. <laughs> that pissed me off when I was 17. Now that I'm 47, it's quaint. You can call me Helene's boy all you want. <laughs> Helene's my mom. Although, oh, blah, blah. Although numerous things have been taught about attainment to the time of reaching fruition, it is more profound to possess the definite certainty of attainment after having unmistakably practiced the view, meditation, and action. Although bodhisattvas who have accomplished the levels are not obscured even by serious wrongdoing or misdeeds done for the sake of the teachings, since someone like us has to fear the lower realms, it is more profound to shun without involvement wrongdoing and se severe faults. And that's where he shows himself to be a fundamentalist. He says, don't do wrong, you might roast in hell. A liberal says, wrongdoing is its own punishment. Good doing is its own reward. We can serve our brainstem or we can serve our midbrain. We can serve the dark side or we can serve the light side. We can be a man and woman of cruelty and selfishness, or we can be a man and woman of love and wisdom. I like the second. I suspect you do too. Moreover, without self-interest and for the general benefit of beings, it is more profound to seal your practices, such as offering and giving, copying teachings and reciting texts, with that dedication free from conceptualizing the three spheres. And that's all you get for today. I'm going to be right back. I forgot my miss. Let's move this out of the camera. It's kind of tacky tacky. Woo! Be right back. And I'm back, my friends. Thank you for your patience. Although today's meditation is also going to be approximately 36 minutes, it's a special treat. Oh, oh it's the aftertaste that gets you. Oh, oh, that is nasty. I'm not sure that's healing or just punitive. Okay, here we go. Today, we're gonna, for the first third of the meditation, we're going to do long rim, the graduated stages on the path to enlightenment. For the second stage, we're going to focus mainly on sensation and letting go. For the third phase of the third section, we're going to focus mainly on appearances and letting go. Today's practice is inspired first by the Gelugs and then by the Nyingmas. This is extremely liberal and sure to give any fundamentalists acute gas pains. I'm talking metaphorically, I wouldn't curse anybody. So let's start in. Please sit erect. Oh yeah, I sit erect. Please sit erect. Place your left hand in your lap, palm up. Place your right hand in your lap, palm up. Thumbs do not touch. Let us begin with renunciation. How this not satisfy?
Why turn from suffering's cause? This is the Tibetan saint whose name I'm going to horribly mispronounce, I think of Shagpar, or Shagpar. And, and what he would do is he would do a retreat. He would do a retreat on Gelug teaching, Kagyu teachings, and Nyingma teachings. You've got to love the non-sectarian sentiment. How karma be quite just. How this chance be precious. How could this be funny? Now let's change channels to that of Tom Lin's union of compassionate taking and loving giving. How could each be kind mom? I take full as black smoke. How could each, let's try that again, how are all more than me? Why give wise as white light? In through nose, out through pores. So this is where to you go back to a prior lesson. Take fool smoke, give wise light.
full smoke. Oops, my mistake, it should be full wise. Let's try that again. Let's move on to Buddha's wisdom of letting go. Let's play with the notion of the body. How bod feel releasing. How is bond dependent? How could bond never last? That's right, folks. 200 years from now, this body will be a bunch of dust. It's not intended to scare us, but impermanence can be a powerful spiritual tool to both let go and deeply appreciate the present moment. How could Bond not be me? How could Bond not be mine? How could Bod not be grasped? Why could I let Bod go? Now, of course, that doesn't mean ceasing to take care of ourselves. It means ceasing to be neurotic and grasping at ourselves. And of course, when I say grasping ourselves, I don't mean in the dirty, dirty puberty way. <laughs> Why could I let Bod go?
Why would I let Bud go? When will I let Bud go? Now let's do Meta's loving kindness that longs to lavish everyone with great peace. How peace good releasing. How peace feel releasing. Now to me, give great peace. Now to some, give great peace. Now to all, Give great peace. Now to each, give great peace. Each piece. That completes the first third of this morning's guided meditation. We're now going to practice the union of Maha Mudra and Dzogchen that focuses on sensation and letting go while simultaneously giving, lavishing others 
with even greater love and joy. So here's the tantric version of Metta. Meta. Let's give everyone greater love for everyone else. Hearts love light from blue whom. Hearts love light, bless body. Hearts love light, bless body's beings. Hearts love light, now bless here. Hearts love lights, bless here's beings. Hearts love lights, now bless earth. Hearts love lights, bless earth's beings. Hearts love lights, bless all worlds. Hearts love lights, bless all beings. Beings melt into world, worlds. All worlds melt into earth. Earth's beings melt into earth. Earth now melts into here. Here's beings melt into here. Here now melts into Bod. Bod's beings melt into Bod. Body melts into whom? Heart whom melts into space. Vast expense, expanse, empty void. Vast void.
what feeling releasing? Feel free. How could this be funny? Grin with lips, releasing. Really Noticing, relaxing. This is. In the Nyingma teaching, I'm sorry, in the Dzogchen teachings of the Nyingma, this is sometimes thought of as the breakthrough. Let's do another set, more of the same. This time, instead of giving love, we're going to give joy. That's right, so far today we've given wisdom, peace, love, and now we're going to give joy. I dare say, the more wisdom, peace, love, and joy we give, karmically speaking, the more wisdom, peace, love, and joy we will experience. Hearts, joy, light from blue hood. Hearts, joy, lights, bless body. Hearts, joy, lights, bless bonds, beings. Hearts, joy, lights, now bless here. Hearts, joy, light, bless here's beings. Hearts, joy, light, now bless earth.
Hearts joy light, bless Earth's being. Hearts joy light, bless all worlds. Hearts joy light, bless all beings. So on the in breath, there's a little teeny tiny mustard seed sized blue orb at the heart. On the out breath, it expanded to fill the universe and all its denizens. It's just a little thing for you to work on in the future. All beings melt into worlds. All worlds melt into Earth. Earth's beings melt into Earth. Earth now melts into here. Here's beings melt into here. Here now melts into Bod. Bod's beings melt into Bod. Bod now melts into who? Heart who melts into space. Vast expanse.
pants, empty void. Vast Void What feeling releasing? Good morning. Yes, what can I do for you? Um, it's working better. Thanks for asking. It's wor no, it's, but it's better. So sometimes good enough is good enough. Thank you. Bye bye now. I will. Bye bye now. And that was the landlord. He says hello. <laughs> what feeling releasing? Interruptions will always happen. Roll with them and dive back in. When I was a lower bodhisattva, an interruption would make me lose my mind. Yeah, it was just part of life. Feel free. Actually, I would have ignored that. I thought that was the alarm and I was going to try to turn it off. Whoops. How could this be funny? What? Uh, noticing, relaxing. This ease.
So we've completed the second third of this morning's guided meditation, playing with the union of Mahamudra and Dzogchen, playing with uh, love and breaking through. Now we're going to, for the final third, do a different flavor of Mahamudra and Dzogchen. We're going to blend the Mahayana intention lavish everyone with an auspicious rebirth, with the tantric exercise of rehearsing our own transference of consciousness of our very subtle mind, upper central channel, outer crown wheel, into the heart of uh, the Buddha, as we understand him or her. Um, and we're going to combine that with the Dzogchen practice of the leap over. I also like to call it the union of uh, morbid love and uh, visual awareness and letting go. This can be done gazing at a wall or gazing out the window. I'm going to open the window! Oh, and look at the infinite gray that is May here in East San Diego County. Woof! Woof! Here we go! Okay. So I'm angled now towards the window. I'm trying not to be neurotic about it, just trying to be very relaxed and hip and groovy about it. Okay. <laughs> That's a little too groovy. <laughs> oh, if silliness was a crime, I'd be in jail. <laughs> okay. We're going to start off with our eyes closed, hands in lap, just like normal. Everyone dies and permanence is inevitable, so let's wish everyone, lovingly wish that everyone, when their time comes, takes a peaceful, auspicious rebirth, whatever that may be. Give to each. Great rebirth. Now for ourselves, great rebirth out through crown. Where crown ohm releasing. Ohm free. Ohm free. This E. What seeing, releasing.
gently open your eyes. If your eyes want to roll up, that's okay. If you want to gaze out the window or at a wall, that's just fine. What's seeing? Releasing. Remember, these are rhetorical questions. See free. How could this be funny? Grin with cheeks, releasing. Noticing, relaxing. This ease. Gently close the eyes. Give to each great rebirth. Great rebirth out through crown. Crown Ohm releasing. Ohm free.
the alarm I was thinking of. But seeing, releasing, gently open your eyes, your eyes can roll up if you wish, if they don't, don't worry, eventually they will. What seeing, releasing. How could this be funny? Grin with eyes, releasing. Noticing, relaxing. This is Hope you enjoyed this morning's 36 minute guided meditation that is the union of Lam Rim, Mahamudra, and Dzogchen. I invite you to, in preparation for tomorrow's class, to do two things. Number one, um, Use, go to my, um, what's it called? Class, go to my website, go to the class material, find the class materials tab, go to the class materials page. My website is lamajigway.com, don't worry about that. So go to the class materials page and download your free copy of Lama Chenre Zig, print that out, and if you can, put it in a little teeny frame. It's not important, but it can be a helpful tool for tomorrow's meditation. Also, um, we did a, I did a video a week or two in the past, helping a friend, helping someone over the internet manifest. And in it, I described how to pronounce the six little mantra. Review that and allow yourself to grow more comfortable reciting Om Mani. Padme Hum. You do those two things. Practice reciting Om Mani Padme Hum or Om Mani Padme Hum and print out that image and you'll get even more out of tomorrow's guided meditation. to paraphrase one of my teachers, if I may. I'm not a Theravadan monk. I'm not a Mahayana monk. I'm not a Tantrayana monk. I'm a Buddhist monk. Come, let us set aside pettiness and embrace the freedom of non-sectarianism.
I invite you now to join me for a gentle set of geriatric yoga entitled Untying the Heart's Knots. Please sit erect, lace your hands behind your tush, please open your chest and push to the left. Why get wise, really sing. Please reverse. Now to each, give wisdom. Back to sun. Please release your hands, place them in your lap, swing them out and overhead, please bend to the left. Why give peace, really see. Please reverse and after each give great peace. Back to center. Let's make our way to downward facing fetal position, which is also known as child's pose. Please curl your hands in the fist and gently press your knuckles into the meditation blanket just above your knees. Enthusiastically straighten your arms, ride the momentum into the seated samurai position, which is of course also known as Lion's Pose. Please lace your hands behind your tush, please open your chest, drop your head, roll your gaze up. 
What seeing, really seeing. What hearing, really seeing. What feeling, really seeing. Please release your hands. Please cup your palms, press your hands gently together so the center of your palms are hovering before your, the upper third of your chest. Please relax your shoulders down and twist to the left. Why give joy releasing? Back to center, relax your shoulders down. Shoulders make dreadful earrings. That's what I found. Please twist to the right. Now to each give great joy. Back to center, relax the shoulders, hands and knees in preparation for Kat Kau Asana. Open mouth, slack jaw, give to each great comfort. Please stand up. Wow! Okay. <laughs> Please place your weight on the major minor ball of each foot behind the big and little toe. Heels off the yoga mat, or in this case the yoga blanket. Subtle bend in the knees, hips thrust forward, hands lace behind the tush, the tuchas, the ass, whatever synonym you prefer. Chest open, head dropped, eye gate, roll the gaze up. How could this be funny? Grin with lips, really sing. Noti uh, noticing, relaxing. Please release your hands. Woo! Much better. Okay. We're going to conclude with the three recitations that are found um, in the latest free version of the PDF entitled First Set of Lesson Text, which you can download for free off of the class materials page a lot using the class materials link. Every lesson concludes with these three recitations of love and auspiciousness. While performing these three recitations, let's do four sets of bows. We'll begin with two sets of 12-phase Indian-inspired 12-phase sun salutations. By this virtue man, you accomplish the spontaneous, habitual, easy, and effective mastery of Buddha's mental yogas, of devotional awareness, oopsie, of wisdom, peace, love, and joy. And now lead every living being, without exception to this ground. May everyone be healthy, wealthy, and happy. May everyone practice skillfully and joyfully. May everyone accomplish Jamaizaganism. And then how many others do likewise. For truly that is the meaning of life. Om Mani Padme Hu. We now conclude with two repetitions of Vietnamese inspired vows. May I always be cared for throughout all my lives by the Buddha of compassion emanating as my kind teacher. 
and as such may I always enthusiastically and joyfully tread this excellent path praised by the conquerors. Woo! A little trembly. A little trembly, but a lot of fun. Well, my friends, I thank you for your time and your kind attention. I thank you for your enthusiasm to be the best you can be, both physically as well as emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. Also, thank you for whatever support you've offered. May you and yours, even if that support is as simple as liking me, liking the video, or sharing it on Facebook. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Now, before you go, I want to remind you to click the subscribe button and the like button as well as the share button. Remember, after the video is over, find the big YouTube button over here, right up there. Click that, it'll take you to your home page. On the left hand side, towards the bottom, will be a tab that reads Manage Subscriptions. Click that and look up either Lama Jigme or Tantric Sex God One. And to the right of that name will be a little box. When you check that, you'll be able to receive an email notification for my next video. Hey, remember those links I told you about? You could use one of those links to help keep this monk fed, which would be lovely, but not mandatory. And there's another link you can use to register for the next series of weekly webinars. When do they begin? The first week of July. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.